Tonight, we're learning more about the difficult moves some Florida parents say they're forced to make to get help for a child with mental illness. Katie Legrone first exposed the issue in December, and tonight she reveals why Florida is failing to fix the problem. You have reunited with your children, and I wish you all well. Thank you. At these recent ceremonies in Florida. I thought I was the best mom in the world to them. Parents whose bad choices forced the state to take their children away. We were separated eight months. Are celebrated for making the right decisions. Look at it. To get them back. Look at you. A great day, lovely day. I cried. I was so happy. But what happens when a parent has done nothing wrong? We knew that he needed help. But feels they have no other choice but to give their child up. I feel like I failed him. This father, who we're not identifying by name, first shared his story with us in December. 13 years old, and you're saying he has already tried to kill you yes. and your wife. Yep, he tried to kill the dog twice. His son, who's diagnosed with multiple mental and behavioral disorders, spent years in and out of clinics. Dad says long-term treatment became impossible. The insurance would stop paying. Industry insiders say kids in custody can get better treatment for mental illness, leaving some desperate families in Florida making a gut-wrenching decision. It's just wrong that as a parent, after I've tried everything I can for five years, that the only way I can get him the help he needs is to give him up. We can do more for these kids. Insurance, just one of the reasons, says Dr. Robert Card, whose office is contracted by the state to manage the welfare of roughly 7,000 kids on Florida's west coast. He says each year his office alone receives nearly a dozen children from parents so desperate to get their child help, they give them up. Should it even get to that point? Of course not. Card says Florida lacks the resources and know-how to handle extreme cases of child mental illness. So even in the state's care, he says, many children are sent out of state for treatment. Taxpayers pay top dollar for. As much as $1,000 a day. It's more than unfair, it's really indefensible. Beth Struhl recently led a government study on the issue and found parents who give up children to get them help for mental illness is a nationwide problem. It's not a solution. It should never be a solution. The practice has to be eliminated. Last year, nearly 1,000 children were abandoned by their parents in Florida. It's the only number the state could provide us. But it doesn't reveal how many of these children fell into the system for mental health services. Like most states, Florida doesn't track it. In fact, according to the state, it's not allowed. DCF policy does not permit parents to relinquish their rights in an effort to obtain services. A spokesperson from the State Department of Children and Families wrote us in this email. Are you surprised that this is happening? Yes, ma'am. State Representative Chris Latvala unsuccessfully introduced legislation last session to improve Florida's child welfare system. There has to be a solution other than telling a parent that they have to give up parental, their parental rights to get their child the help that they need. Latvala says he'll be contacting DCF to find out why it's happening and how to stop it so children in Florida get the help they really need without losing their family. It's just putting them in an impossible position that no parent should have to, to deal with. Katie Legrone, WTXL, ABC 27. Experts point to the need for better mental health training, resources, and money as the key to fix this problem. To read more about this issue, including the results of that nationwide study, just head to our website, WTXL.TV.